in the um, hot ease, right? Like, you know, <laughs> and he, he, he was back, he goes, how many ounces? And I, I could have answered him, oh, you mean Dr. O.Z.? <laughs> it's 341 right now. I guess it's hey, uh, so. My name is Rich Paul, and I'm the organizer of the uh, 341. Oh, oh, yeah. and, uh, for and we're out here rallying today for freedom. It is time for the government to end its senseless civil war that it has been waging against us. Inoffensive people, people who harm no one. No government has a right to go to war with its own population. I got into this fight due to medical marijuana. When I started, when I became an activist for uh, legalization of marijuana, I hadn't smoked it in 22 years. I became an activist because my wife died of cancer in 2002 without the benefit of medical marijuana and with the hindrance of the government at every step of her medical care a person has the right to save their own life by any means necessary your body your health your life belong to you but what I realized after I became an activist and started smoking again was that it was medicinal for me too. See, I hadn't done dated since my wife died and it had been uh, six years and I needed marijuana in order to take me back out of my shell and get me used to the idea of being involved with other people. And I realized then that a lot of people who say they use marijuana recreationally are using it medicinally. And that those who are, are not using it medicinally, those who enjoy, who are using it only for enjoyment, still have the right to their own body. You should not have to beg a doctor for permission to get your medical care. You should be able to choose your own treatment. Doctors should be advisors, not prescribers. I speak feeling of, of, of this, uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, prescriptions, also because I was an Adderall user, legally prescribed for 15 years. And every single month, I had to pay a doctor $100 to tell me I still needed Adderall. Now this is bad both because that money was wasted, but also because when you occupy a doctor's time, when you increase the demand for medical services, you increase the price of medical services. If people don't have to go to have doctors tell them what they already know, doctors are going to have to cut their prices to fill their waiting rooms again. And it's about time that that happened. Medical care is way too expensive in the United States. We've got a number of enemies in this quest. And the first is Big Pharma. Big Pharma wants to make sure that you are forced to use their dangerous, sometimes deadly antidepressants. How many people have died of antidepressants in the United States? And how many people would still be alive if they smoked legal cannabis instead? No longer needing its services because anybody can sell weed. I did it for quite a while. It's, it's not that hard. Just be honest and don't be violent. If you get ripped off, let it go. But violence is vital to this issue of legalization of marijuana because the violence that follows the drug trade does not happen because of marijuana. 
It happens because of marijuana laws. During Prohibition, it was a regular, regular occurrence for organized crime to kill each other, to have what our government uh, euphemistically calls collateral damage of innocent civilians killed in their shootout. Well, guess what? All that stopped with repeal because it wasn't the alcohol that made them kill. It was the alcohol laws. Whenever you have large amounts of money in a situation where you cannot sell for redress if you are robbed, where you cannot call the police for defense if people are coming to your door, then yes, you will have violence. That is guaranteed. Every law of prohibition brings violence, and every repeal of a law of prohibition eliminates violence. So when I say that we're gathered here for peace, I mean in more ways than one. I mean peace from the government war of aggression against us. I mean peace from the tax collection that pays for it. And I also mean inner peace. Because as I have smoked marijuana, as I have become a user, it has, tr it has brought me to a new spiritual level than one that I was at. I spent my life, I was a computer programmer. I worked for uh, Citibank, and I worked for a number of other large companies. And, uh, and I gave that up to become an anarchist, to become an activist, and I have not picked it back up, because I will not work to support a system that is at war with me. Now, they may call that treason, but you can't commit treason against the government to which you've sworn allegiance. And my government is at is war with me. Why would I swear that allegiance? <laughs> Until they end the war with me, I will continue to pursue it as a war. Because real people are harmed. Real people are having their lives ruined. We think, it, we think it's very different to put a man in jail for a year than to kill him. Well, a lifetime is about 70, 80, maybe 90 years. So if you put 90 men in jail for, uh, for a year, you have effectively taken an entire life from somebody. But the persecution of marijuana users doesn't end with jail. When we get out, we find it impossible to, to find work to even drive a cab. Why? Not because we, they think people who smoke marijuana are incapable, but only because that's what the government requires. They tell us that if we smoke marijuana, it will ruin our lives. The truth is, if we smoke marijuana and they catch us, they will ruin our lives. If not, we're going to be just fine. important things that you can do with medical marijuana and with other psychedelic drugs, including mushrooms and including LSD, is you can treat heroin addiction. People who receive cognitive behavioral therapy while tripping on mushrooms or LSD are frequently completely freed from the grasp of these dangerous drugs. 